Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Pia and 2022 is more than halfway over. I just like don't like time. Like I don't like thinking about it. I don't like talking about it. I have so far read 93 books, which is kind of also nuts. I think I've only DNF'd maybe one book a month, not even one book a month, maybe one book a month statistically. So I have read most of these books. And so we're just going to talk about it. This is one of my favorite tags to do, the mid-year book freakout tag. It's probably the only tag I do semi-regularly just because I don't really like tags. <laughs> I think these questions are good. It's a good little check-in to see where we're at. So we're at 93 books. As of filming those, like literally like tomorrow or like the day I post this, I can have read more, but it's whatever. Anyway. We're going to talk about books I've read, my faves, my least faves, what we're gearing up to look forward to. It's going to be a wild ride, so let's get into it. So I have all the questions on my phone. I did, in fact, copy and paste them from last year. The first question, the mid-year book freakout tag, is like the biggest question, truly, of the fucking thing. And that is, what is your favorite book you've read so far this year? Which is like a weighted question, am I right? It's like a three-way tie. And these are very different books. So let's talk about it. So we have normal people here. I, I feel like I'm going to mention this book a lot. And that's why I'm going to try to talk about it very briefly. I think like a lot of people don't really like Sally Rooney, but a lot of, like a, an equal, if not larger amount of people really do. So I'm just delving into her work. And I loved my time reading this. I constantly am thinking about this book. I think that's like one of the marks of a great book for me, at least is that it stays with you to some to some extent. Then we have Ace. This is actually non-fiction. So like, you're diverse. Hello. This I obviously tabbed. It's a lot to me because I am Ace, but also just I think it's like a really, really good like exploration of asexuality, but also just of representation over time and history and the spectrum of asexuality or the spectrum of sexual desire and exploring sexual desire in our culture and, and throughout time. And I mean, it does say what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex. So that is what it's about. It does a really fantastic job of, of doing those things. I and I, I really 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 enjoyed it. So the other one is Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined. I truly thought I read this last year. So when I was going to make this list I was like, how to I read this in January, granted. I feel like there's always one book that I read in January that ends up on my favorite list of the year. This is probably gonna be that book. <laughs> this is a hardening contemporary YA, which are some of my favorite books. It's fantastic. It's it deals with grief, it deals with really, really hard topics, and it's incredible. So let's go with best sequel. If you didn't know, I don't read a lot of sequels because I generally don't read a lot of fantasy and fantasy series, and those tend to be the ones that have sequels. <laughs> but with that being said, my favorite sequel of 2022 so far is The Midnight Orchestra. This is the sequel to The Mistwick School. It's the second book in the Mistwick series. This is like a magical school that deals with musical magic. And I think that these are just like such like absolute perfect books. I adore them so much. I don't own them physically, but I do recommend reading the audiobooks if you are so inclined or able to. They're only on Audible, but they're like free with your subscription or whatever. And they are phenomenal. <laughs> they have like musical elements within the audiobook, which are just like fantastic to read. And I love middle grade fantasy. It's one of my favorite genres and a genre I definitely don't read enough of. And I just love this book. This one like, you know, ups the ante and it has some good fun times. If I had to pick just one new release that I am excited for but have not read yet, um, I'm gonna go with the romantic agenda. Like I said, I am just constantly looking for more kind of just all, all types of queer representation in my favorite genres. So this is a romance and this has an asexual main character. This is by Claire Can who wrote Let's Talk About Love, which is over there. And I really enjoyed that book. She has quite a few young adult books, I want to say three or four. And this is her first adult book and it has a bunch of different characters and it's like very summery and fun. And I'm hoping to read it this summer. Really, really hyped on this. Um, it sounds like kind of the perfect thing for me. So we shall see. All right, then we have most anticipated releases that have yet to come out or for the second half of the year. I did a whole video on my most anticipated releases, but as everything that I do, there are bound to be flaws <laughs> and things that I forget and whatnot. So I picked out, I think, I picked out three, but like, honestly, like there are so many. First is Claire Soto is back. This is the new Taylor Dragons read. I like had to talk about it because I was like, I don't want you to think I forgot. I don't want anything I don't know and I'm not well informed. I am, thank you. This is like the fourth now book in this um, like historical universe that Taylor Jenkins Reid has created. I'm inspired by a bunch of different true events. And this is about a tennis player who made her first appearance in Malibu Rising, which was her last book. And I just like, I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is doing such an incredible job. And I am astounded by her talent. Every single time she writes a book, I'm like, are you sure this is not fact? <laughs> are you sure? And I just imagine like all the research and all of the effort, the time and the, the passion that goes into these because it, it honestly, seems like so much work but she keeps doing them and keeps making ama amazing things so I just I can't wait sorry I, I gushed a little bit too much anyway then we have the weight of blood this is the new Tiffany D Jackson I put this on here because I I love Tiffany D Jackson I've met her she's like the coolest 
also like sweetest. She's just such a vibey person. Anyway, I have had some like hits and misses with her books. I think like in concept, I've liked all of her books, like the, the general idea and premise of them, but I've only really loved one of them, which is Grown, which is, oh, it's here. <laughs> and I loved that book. And this is another, another concept that I would really love to see her do. And I think that she can do really well. Um, this is kind of like a Carrie retelling. I just love that. I have no, I've, I've never read Carrie and I've never seen any of the adaptations but for some reason I'm like if Tiffany G. Jackson's gonna do it she's gonna do it right. That's what I hope. And then the last one is Built to Last and this is the new Erin Han. This is her first foray into the adult romance genre. She's previously written some YA romances and I adore Erin Han. I have loved everything that she has written so far and this is going to be like a companion series. There's gonna be three books and I'm too excited. I'm pretty sure the main characters are like were child stars or something like Disney stars or something and like they knew each other and then they like fell out of it or whatever and it's about like home renovation type shit. I don't know but like Erin Han can write the best the best love interest like I have not read a single Erin Han love interest that I didn't fall immediately in love with so <laughs> pray for me honestly. Alrighty next up is the biggest disappointment. Well, if I had to pick just two, <laughs> this is me reaching over to my unhaul pile. This is the no shout. I am planning on unhauling this because it hurt my heart so much because I didn't enjoy it at all. My other one would be Always Jane. I'll talk about them in conjunction. These are two books that just really let me down. Um, one I've actually DNF'd, but this one I did read all of. And they're both by authors that I have previously loved, like basically all of their books. And that was obviously the biggest disappointment because I gave this book, I think, two stars and I gave, and I DNF'd. Always Jane. Yikers on that front. This one was like just too ambitious like nothing really worked out for me in this. The other one was just like it was horrible. <laughs> Next up is biggest surprise and this is like I think my favorite category in this whole list like if I had to pick a favorite because I always feel like these are the books that I don't necessarily get to talk about a lot because they don't end up on like favorites of the year. They're surprising but not perfect. I don't know if that makes any sense. My biggest surprise this year was The Island. I got an arc before it came out and it's so crazy like I actually I, I'm having a hard time describing it because this is my first time talking about it I read this in June so this is about a family just like a not very like conventional family we have like a mother who's like very young and married this guy who already had kids and his wife mysteriously died or like fell down the steps so I thought I went into this basically thinking it was kind of going to be like a a staircase retelling which if you didn't know that's a true crime case that actually just recently got dramatized in the series but there was a documentary called the staircase and now there's a series so that's what i thought it was gonna be but then i was like what is this island aspect so they come upon this island in australia and it's only inhabited by this one family and this family is bonkers like that shit fucking crazy something ends up happening and it is like a fight for your life and it is crazy i read this on the plane and it was like it was the best plane read I've ever had because I just like I just tore through it and I couldn't stop reading. I read The Chain by this author last year I want to say. I actually got gifted that book and it was so great as well but this one just like had that like up the ante factor and it was so addictive and it was just so like exhilarating to read and like terrifying but like exhilarating. <laughs> you don't want this stuff to have happened in real life but it was crazy. It was it was so bananas. So my favorite new authors or are not debut authors. I can't even think of like a single debut that I read this year. Which honestly I need to figure the fuck out. I will have to go with Sally Rooney even though I have only read normal people as of filming this. I just love this book so much that like probably she could write like poop and I wouldn't really care because like this is like untouchable in my head. And there's that. And then I would also say I would also say Rachel and Solomon. This is not a book I read this year. I actually read it this last year but it was really good. Heather friend. This was the closest thing to me, but I have read quite a few Rachel and Solomon books. I really hope I didn't mention her last year for this, um, but I, I think I read three Rachel and Solomon books this year. I've read The Egg Talk, <laughs> I've read one of her YAs, and then I read Weather Girl. So like I've read a lot of her books and I just really really adore her characters. I really like her, I like the scenarios of her books. Um, I think they're very like new and interesting. Next is Fictional Crush. I know maybe I'm like too cynical. <laughs> Or I just haven't read good men that I've really like fallen in love with. So I'm actually going with Felix from The Kindred. Now I actually really, I didn't love this book, but I did love the characters in this book. And I think especially Felix and the other main character Joy had such a beautiful relationship. Like he was so in love with this woman, this girl, <laughs> that I was like, I don't know, the way he spoke about his love for her was in like, like, I don't know. You could only write that shit. Like that's not real. <laughs> I don't know. He like accepted every part of her and I think that was beautiful. And he was also like really chill. Like he was really cool. He was in a band. So like he sounds like my type. So. Okay now with favorite character. I would have to pick two again because I'm indecisive. I would say Addie LaRue. I just think she's such an interesting character. I just like appreciate her and her existence and I think she's a very intricately done character. And I also love Eve Brown. 
you know what, Eve Brown, my favorite brown sister, like I'm saying that right here, right now. And also, Talia Hibber, where are your next books? Because I need them. <laughs> and I also like really wanted to mention these two books, so I, I, I liked throwing them in. But they're very different characters, but I love Eve Brown because I think she's like a very relatable kind of uh, young adult. Not young adult in the sense that like, young adults are like teens, but like actual like young adult. Like I think she's maybe like 20 or something. And I feel like she was very relatable to me, kind of being lost in life and I think also Addie LaRue was a very interesting character because you see so many years of her life which you don't often get with a with a book but because that spanned like 300 years you do okay now we have what made you cry okay yes obviously no more normal people but also the swimmers this is a book I picked up on a whim and I also was like what am I doing to myself? <laughs> this is a book about swimming and it's about swimming. <laughs> How do I describe this book? Half of it is about all these swimmers going about their daily routine and going to this pool and then one day there's a crack in the pool and it's how they are kind of like coping with this or like adjusting their life to it. You know some people are leaving the pool and, and, it, and it's kind of this weird thing of how this one thing can kind of be not your personality necessarily but your your life and your world so like swimming is that for these people and how they're coping with that change and then you have the other timeline which is or not the other timeline but kind of the other half of the book um is about a woman's mother who is um suffering from dementia i believe and she was a swimmer i i'm pretty sure <laughs> that just like hit really close to home for me and i was very much not expecting it and i was listening to this audiobook and i was just like sobbing and i really i didn't see that i didn't see it going <laughs> especially since it's about swimmers. Yeah, I mean, it was very hard to read for me. I don't know if that would be the same for other people who don't have loved ones who have kind of lost parts of their memory or, 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 or things like that. So I don't know, <laughs> but that was my reaction. I don't cry a lot at books unless I'm like really emotional. I was writing my book the other day and I was just crying and I was like, you know what? Good for me. What made me happy? Now this is like, I like that this is the opposite, but it's like also. I, I'm pretty sure I cried reading this book. I cry a lot. A book that made me happy is when you get the chance. Emma Lord. Emma Lord is the Lord. <laughs> Emma Lord writes such like happy books. Like there are obviously like deeper elements here. This one is about a um, girl trying to find her mom. I wouldn't say a heavier topic, but it's definitely like curious, I guess. But Emma Lord's writing style is so heartfelt and, and engaging is, is what what it says on the back. <laughs> it's just written like you're her and like you're the kid, you know? And I think that in some ways it's very fun. Um, I love her descriptions of things. I love the things that she chooses to include as well. I think seeing the world through Emma Lord's lens is like one of my favorite things <laughs> because it's all about cookies and ice cream and Taylor Swift and it's just like such a fun place to be and I had so much fun reading this book like legitimately I did not want to stop reading it and especially since it's so short I was upset when it ended but I just I love her book so much I think she does such an incredible job of keeping these kind of like more serious topics very light and making them very approachable I fucking love her now we have your most beautiful cover I was looking back and I was like I like a lot of these covers but they're not like killing it for me you know what I mean? I have two, because I'm a Libra. First one is The Sea of Tranquility. It's by Emily St. John Mandel. Just, I don't know what it is about this book, but I like that, I like the like planet and I like the colors and I, I just like how it all looks. I like how it all looks <laughs> very like cohesive and it looks like kind of a, it doesn't look like a tapestry exactly, but it looks like a painting. I don't know if I was like on a blue vibe when I was looking at this question, but also An Arrow to the Moon, I think is just such a gorgeous cover by Emily of Japan. I think it just has so many elements going on at once and the way that it incorporates let's talk stylistically like the way it incorporates the title into the blah, 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 blah. i think it's really beautiful i think it really captures the kind of vibes of the actual story which is important and yeah it's really beautiful last question is always the hardest to answer and it's like what's next like what are you gonna read next and you know what everything that's the answer specifically i would really love to read conversations with friends this is like next up on the chopping block because like i said i have to read more sally rooney like my body is craving it my body heart mind and soul so <laughs> i'm really excited to read this and i actually own this one the the copy of normal people this is not mine and that's why it's not tabbed but i'm going to tab this to fill and i'm very excited about it and then i kind of set off on a quest at the endish of last year to read all of the Anne of Green Gables books. This is the next one I have to read so we're just gonna talk about that and this is Anne of Ingleside. I basically set out to read all of the Anne books. Anne of Green Gables is my favorite book of all time and I was doing like kind of a thing with it and I will get back to it I absolutely promise but my life kind of got topsy-turvy on me and I didn't really anticipate moving and switching schools and doing a lot of stuff that I ended up doing that kind of 
shifted my life a lot. So I would love to actually finish reading the series. So I'm on, this is six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't even know where they are because like I literally packed them up and I don't know where, they're in a suitcase somewhere. So I will find them and I will read them and I will vlog them. I am excited to do that. Did they like just move? Like I really don't know where we are in the timeline, but I'll figure it out and I will come back to you guys uh, with these vlogs. I don't know if you're enjoying them, but I was enjoying them. So that's really all that matters. Look out for that sometime when I get my life together. <laughs> that is the mid-year book freak out tag. I'd like to say this is like the only consistent thing in my life is the mid-year book freak out tag. <laughs> what should, what's my question for you guys? You guys always answer it in the comments. What is one book that you haven't read yet but you think could steal your number one like spot for your top book of the year? Because that's tea. Fully tea and I would love to know. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to like and subscribe and do all of the things and I will see you in my next one.